Welcome to another episode of China Update, where I provide you guys with the most up-to-date political, economic, and geostrategic analysis on the world's number two economy. My name is Tony. Let's jump in. Okay, happy Monday, everyone, and a very happy Year of the Rabbit to you all as well. China is on holiday this week for Spring Festival. However, COVID does not take holidays as Omicron continues to spread across the country. First up, let's update the first wave situation. In its last major address before the Lunar New Year holiday over the weekend, the Chinese Center for Disease Control and Prevention announced that its COVID-related death toll topped more than twelve thousand six hundred. In the week before, for reasons we have explored in previous videos, it's very likely that the true rate is many, many times this official number. Indeed, the true toll could be hundreds of thousands higher, given the extent of the outbreak and mortality rates in other countries. Of course, this is up for debate. The World Health Organization has urged Beijing to release more detailed information and has joined other international voices in criticizing the official death rate. The same Center for Disease Control and Prevention official also claimed that more than 1.1 billion people have been infected since zero COVID was abandoned late last year. In a separate Weibo post over the weekend, the China CDC's chief epidemiologist said 80% of the population has been infected in the current outbreak. As China has dismantled its previously massive COVID testing apparatus, these numbers, if published in good. Faith are likely estimates. If over 80% has been infected, as claimed, then the national peak has been reached earlier than anticipated, which is positive for the road to recovery. Indeed, on Thursday, an official with the National Health Commission told reporters that quote China has passed the peak period of severe COVID-19 patients at hospitals and fever outpatients. End quote. On Wednesday last week, the South China metropolis Guangzhou. Also known as Canton in English, said 85% of its population had been infected with COVID. Some commentators have expressed some skepticism, observing that this does feel somewhat early. However, other experts outside of China say that this earlier peak is possible. With hundreds of millions of Chinese traveling for the holiday season this year, the virus is likely spreading far and wide, penetrating even the most remote. And vulnerable regions of the country. Indeed, General Secretary Xi Jinping, in his video address before the New Year holiday, expressed concern for the rural spread of COVID. Small villages have sparse healthcare infrastructure and are populated by large elderly populations. According to government data, there are only 1.62 doctors and nurses combined for every 1,000 people in rural China, compared to the also relatively low rates of 2.9 and 3.3 nationally. Meanwhile, we are now receiving more thorough debate, both internationally and even domestically, regarding the wisdom of reversing zero COVID so suddenly. For example, the following is from a researcher with an advisory body to the State Council, China's cabinet, at an online forum in China in late December. Quote, There was no plan, no steps, no contingency plans. When Singapore reopened, it was in four stages. We've done it all in one go, from hospital beds to medicine, vaccines, and medical workers. We are not prepared for three full years. There was no preparation at all. End quote. Incredibly, he went so far as expressing that Chinese decision makers had become quote, zombified end quote, during the entire process. All his comments at the event were soon after censored on Chinese platforms. Others have expressed similar criticisms. Quote, They could have done it quite differently. China had a year to prepare. It's still a puzzle why that year was not well spent. End quote. Very much aware of these criticisms, Beijing's leading state-run outlet, the People's Daily, has published several cover page articles pushing back on this specific theme. Quote, Some Western media reports on the adjustment of epidemic prevention policies in China are always far from the truth, and the mainstream feelings of the people in China and the international community. In the narrative weaved by these media, China's anti-epidemic policy turned too fast and was unprepared. Which is totally biased hype and political manipulation with ulterior motives. 
end quote. Meanwhile, more economic activity indicators are looking optimistic as the first COVID wave recedes. Over the weekend, data from takeout and restaurant booking giant Mei Tuan suggests dine-in restaurants and food deliveries in China's largest cities are set to rebound over this New Year holiday period. Online searches last week for food delivery and dining in at restaurants for Lunar New Year Eve were fourfold and double the same period last year, respectively. However, Chinese financial media outlet Tai Xin cautions, quote, Despite the uptick in customers, it will still take time for the food and beverage industry to fully recover. Last year, consumer spending on dining services dropped 6.3% to 4.3 trillion yuan, 634 billion US dollars. End quote. The same outlet reports that Yoshinoya, a Japanese-style fast food chain, saw revenue last week for its Beijing restaurants recover to 90% of pre-pandemic levels. Travel is ramping up too. On Friday, the Ministry of Culture and Tourism said that China will resume overseas group tours organized by travel agencies for Chinese citizens starting from the 6th of February. The services have only been opened to 20 major countries, however, and it appears that these are only countries, with the sole exception of Malaysia, which did not introduce China-specific restrictions on inbound travelers. Next up, a new survey shows how Chinese people view the West. Hey guys, if you enjoyed this episode of China Update, don't forget to hit that like button. And as always, anyone who can go that extra mile and help me keep this channel sustainable, this is the primary way in which the channel is kept sustainable through subscriber support. Patreon and Buy Me A Coffee links are in the description below. As always, thank you so much everybody for the ongoing support. Researchers from the National University of Singapore, Canada's University of British Columbia, and Rice University in the United States have jointly published a survey looking at popular Chinese perceptions of the United States and European countries. According to the survey results, which were published in the peer-reviewed Journal of Current Chinese Affairs, Chinese people hold a much more favorable opinion of European countries than they do of the US. The survey asked over 2,000 Chinese respondents to choose from five options, ranging from very favorable to very unfavorable, to describe their views towards the United States and nine European countries, Belgium, Denmark, France, Germany, Italy, the Netherlands, Spain, Sweden, and the UK. The respondents were more likely to live in China's coastal and urban areas, and thus there is somewhat of an urban bias. Bias. What does the report say? Well, according to the survey, an overwhelming majority had an unfavorable view of the United States, with only 23% of respondents taking a very or somewhat favorable view. Most participants responded positively towards all European countries except for Britain to which just 46% responded positively. The researchers expressed that the divergence is notable because European countries and the US are often lumped together as the West in mainstream discourse. However, we note here on China Update that in recent years, state media has increasingly discussed the Five Eyes intelligence sharing group of Anglophone nations and the English-speaking world as being in competition with China rather than the US alone. This would explain why all European countries except for Britain still have positive images in China. Indeed, the report itself speculates that the reason Chinese have low views of the UK is, quote, due to the fact that the UK has been a close ally of the US in pressuring China, end quote. Sadly, the feeling is very much mutual. We remember last year, Pew survey results found negative views of China reached historic heights in almost every country surveyed. Citing that Pew poll, this latest survey of Chinese attitudes notes, quotes, Chinese surveyed have a much greater favorability towards European countries than the other way around. End quote. The report writes that a factor here could be the quote, disproportionate attention devoted to US China relations by the Chinese media. End quote. Germany was the most popular country in the survey, with 69% holding favorable views and the lowest negative number in the results at 23%. Interestingly, the report found, quote, those born during or after the 1990s were 11% less likely than older residents to hold favorable views of the U.S., end quote. 
This could be related to the higher levels of nationalism observed among Chinese youth. A generation beginning to enter senior policy-making positions in the government in the next 10 years. Okay, that is today's episode of China Update. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching. Have a wonderful day wherever you are, and I will see you all tomorrow.